Rapp's persona in the first two seasons of Sex Lives of College Girls as Layton has been on a quest to accept her sexuality. Find out how Renee Rapp responds to how she feared homophobic comments for her role in the show. Also, what does Renee Rapp have to say about Layton's complicated love life and her hopes for season 3? Watch this video for full details. First up, review of Frank Kimberly's most recent semester in season 2. Pauline Chalamet's character, Kimberly, must find a method to pay for college. After losing her scholarship since she cheated on a final exam, she doesn't want to inform her parents because they constantly shame her about money. Kimberly accepts several jobs but ultimately decides to sell her eggs to maintain her position at Essex. Kimberly also starts a romance with Jackson, a new student and climate refugee from Kansas and the two never seem to agree on anything. But by the time they start to feel at ease in their relationship, Kimberly ends it because she has developed emotions for Kanan, Whitney's ex-boyfriend and her co-worker. Kimberly goes on an economics gala with Kanan when she discovers that he lied to her about asking someone else. She calls him out and kisses him. Next is review on Bella Malhotra's most recent semester on season 2. She establishes The Foxy, a comic magazine for women, and begins a friendship with benefits with Eric, the editor-in-chief of The Catalan, which swiftly develops into a romantic partnership. Even though we don't want it to, everything excellent has to come to an end. Bella informs Dan O'Connell, a touring stand-up and late-night host, that she is a comedy nerd and an aspiring writer after being appointed as his student liaison. He urges her to mail her CV, but Eric steals Bella's spotlight at a boisterous frat party that Dan attends. In an unexpected turn of events, Bella decides to cheat on Dan to get Eric to remember her when it's time to select an intern. Eric ends their relationship as a result. They expel Bella from the group when she mistreats them and lies to the other writers. Bella applies to change schools after losing everything. Up next, review of Leighton Murray's most recent semester in Season 2. Leighton comes out to all her housemates at the beginning of the season, and she soon begins hooking up with as many girls as possible. Her effort to overlook the matter when one of the girls gives her chlamydia ultimately backfires when a girl she slept with claims that Leighton gave her an STI during a sorority gathering. Leighton joins Kappa, which is fortunate because everything works out great nonetheless. She declines their invitation. Leighton also comes out to her parents and begins dating Tatum a wealthy junior on the tennis team. The two get off to a bad start, but soon a relationship develops. Unfortunately, their relationship ends quickly when Leighton's ex-girlfriend Alicia re-emerges. Leighton splits up with Tatum and rekindles his relationship with Alicia following an altercation at the Women's Center fundraiser. After understanding that she has changed, she also gives up Greek life for good. Instead, she prefers to spend her time at the Women's Center. And next is a review of Whitney Chase's most recent semester in Season 2. Whitney doesn't know what to do with all of her spare time now that soccer season is over. She doesn't appear to have any active interests outside of hanging out with Kanan and her housemates. Unlike everyone else on campus who has long-term ambitions and extracurricular activities to polish up their resumes. Sadly, Kanan must be excluded from the discussion because he dumps Whitney early in the season after learning that she doesn't trust him. Whitney finally finds something to do as she copes with her breakup. She eventually enrolls in biochemistry, one of the most difficult classes on campus, and it's there she meets Andrew, the man she will eventually fall in love with. Whitney and Andrew also get off to a rocky start because he is quite harsh and patronizing, but after they meet for a lab, they start dating. Additionally, they go on a date that goes poorly, and Whitney breaks up with him immediately. Up next, Renee Rapp discusses Layton's complicated love life and her hopes for Season 3 of The Sex Lives of College Girls. The Essex College Academy year has come and gone. Layton, Kimberly, Bella, and Whitney finished their first year at the prestigious private university on Thursday, marking the turbulent conclusion of season 2 of The Sex Lives of College Girls. Layton, played by Renee Rapp, left her sorority, dumped her fiancé, and started dating Alicia again. Renee Rapp isn't sure how she feels about it either. During a recent interview before the finale, Rapp told Deadline she had a lot going on. After breaking up with Alicia in season 1 because Layton wasn't ready to come out, the episode closes with Alicia texting Layton to see if they can get back together. It appears innocent when Layton accepts to meet Alicia. That is, until she attends a fundraiser for the Women's Center with her new girlfriend Tatum, and immediately finds that the two may not get along as well as she had initially assumed. Layton is eager to terminate things when Tatum makes some derogatory remarks about his pals. She informs Tatum that they may have traits that she wants to change about herself. Rap commented on the scene, saying that she loved it. She detested the situation Layton found herself in. She added that it was great that Layton was able to say that. That opens the door for Alicia and Layton's spark, which is pretty evident to rekindle right away. Layton wasn't ready to be honest about her sexuality 
which made Alicia struggle. Therefore, their relationship ended in season 1 despite their bond. It makes sense that the two could want to consider what might have been now that Layton is now out. Rap is aware that the audience may not well receive Layton's fast return to that relationship. Rap claimed to love Midori Francis, who plays Alicia. She acknowledged that some people would be accepted with the fact that they didn't really address anything from the previous season and simply jumped back into their relationship. She added she doesn't know how she feels about it because it's a lot. One thing is certain, Layton has grown immensely since the transfer, as she was first uncomfortable having her sexual orientation known. Rap added that it was such a significant element of her existence and how she connected with others and that's a big part of who she is, but a big part of how you see her character grow. She said she loved how Layton's parents stood by her without reservation since her mom and dad are incredibly close to her, but Rap believes she has such a unique storyline this season with her dad and coming out to him. In her opinion, the interactions between her and her family are incredibly sweet. She likes how helpful they are because it's exactly what she needs. Viewers have seen Layton throughout the previous two seasons start to let go of anything that doesn't serve her and embrace her community, no matter how implausible that may seem. This all comes to a head in the finale when, after spending a year trying to get accepted, she leaves her sorority because she doesn't feel at home around the other members of the chapter. To everyone's astonishment, she also confides in her roommates about her situation when Alicia asks for their guidance. Rap saw them as turning points in Layton's emotional development since, in season 1, she struggled with letting others see her vulnerability. Rap said her manager laughed at her because Layton shows no warmth, but Rap thinks Layton has come to show a level of warmth. Rap, who is now on tour in support of her first EP, Everything to Everyone, jokingly said that she's only using two brain cells. In her opinion, Layton does possess a certain amount of warmth, whether or not the crowd concurs with her. Rap added that Layton clearly becomes more herself after coming out, but she also believes that Layton does so emotionally, which is wonderful to observe. Those who follow Rap on social media may be aware that she is touring with her friend and co-star Alia Chanel Scott, whose character Whitney had a tough season 2 conclusion of her own. She claimed that, up to this point, the best part of the sex lives of college girls has been their friendship. She remarked that any scene she got to do with Alia was the best. In her opinion, she is the world's best friend. She is the best friend ever and always helped me make the most of difficult circumstances. Fortunately, Leighton Whitney and their roommates Kimberly and Bella are still alive. Just one day before the last episodes of season 2, the sex lives of college girls received a third season renewal. Rap only has a few straightforward hopes for Leighton as she begins her sophomore year. She hopes she finds better clothes, better friends, and better girls. Up next on The Sex Lives of College Girls, Renee Rapp initially didn't feel comfortable playing a queer character. The Sex Lives of College Girls star Renee Rapp admitted that she experienced anxiety when she first began portraying her gay character Leighton Murray. The 22-year-old actress expressed concern about criticism from her peers in an interview with People magazine. Rapp stated she had other people in her life when the first season came out, and that she felt judged and uncomfortable so she was terrified for the show to come out. Rapp plays Leighton, the daughter of an alumnus and a privileged first-year student at the fictional Essex College. Leighton spends most of the first season hiding her sexual orientation from her friends and family as she battles internalized anti-gay self-loathing, explores her sexuality and creates a support network among her loved ones. Before getting cast on the popular show, Rap played in Mean Girls on Broadway. She admitted that the release of season 2 in November made her feel less nervous. Rap said she was very happy for the second season to come out because she felt a lot more at ease not being frightened to hear something homophobic or slut-shaming. Openly bisexual Rap claimed that she frequently struggled to distinguish her own experiences from those of her on-screen persona. She said Leighton had given her confidence in her gay Journey. She released her debut album Everything to Everyone on November 11 and will return as Regina George in the upcoming Mean Girls movie musical from Paramount. She claimed she didn't think she ever truly dealt with those emotions as publicly as Layton did. That's it on how Renee Rapp feared homophobic comments for her role on the show, Layton's complicated love life, and her hopes for season 3. Let us know what you think in the comment section. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.